Elvis's movies came out in Japan a little bit later than they did in America for obvious reasons. Love Me Tender, for example, came out in February 1957. Loving You came out in April 1958. But Jailhouse Rock took years to be released in Japan. I'm going to talk a little bit about that today in this video and also going to go through the history of Jailhouse Rock on single in Japan. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how to identify the earliest pressings of the first single. So let's take a look, look at the singles first of all. The earliest copies came in this pale pink insert and we'll have this yellow Victor sleeve. And in fact, the 78s also came with this exact same insert. On the back, it has the lyrics to both songs in English. On the front, it mentions the movie at the bottom here, although it hadn't actually been released at the time the single came out. And it gives the title Jailhouse Rock in English, I think. Uh, yeah, and also in Japanese. But the title of the song, Jailhouse Rock, and the movie Jailhouse Rock are slightly different in Japanese. They've given the song the title Kangoku Roku, and the movie they've called it Jailhouse Roku after the English words, right? But in fact, uh, Kangoku in Kangoku Roku, that means prison anyway. Sometimes that would happen in Japan with the movies. The movie title would be different to the song, theme song title. So a little trivia question for you here. What was the first Elvis movie in America, I'm talking here, that had a title that was not also the title of a song in the movie? Okay, I'm not going to repeat that because it's a long question. So let's have a look at the uh, record. There we go. I'll come back to this one and talk about how I know that this is a very early pressing later on in the video. And there were at least two pressings which came with this pink insert. So just because you, just because you have a pink insert, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have the very earliest uh, copy. All right, so that came out in 1957, late 1957. And then it appeared with this blue insert. This is a very rare one. This came out in early 1958. And again, it still has the same Victor yellow sleeve, and they continued using this until the early 60s. So otherwise this blue insert is exactly the same as the pink one, front and back, everything about it is uh, the same. Getting into the 60s, the single appeared on this green insert, and there are quite a few variants. <coughs> Excuse me. One of which actually has that black and white picture we just saw on the blue one and the um, pink one, right about here. And that's also a very rare one. Most of the green ones you'll find will be just like this with no, no pictures on the front. Really the differences come on the back of the insert. Okay, so again, it's basically the same as the first two with the lyrics, but you can also see it has a price down here of. 330 yen. So that tells you it's from somewhere between 62 and 65. And this brown Victor sleeve is also from that period. So this is probably the same, uh, probably the correct sleeve. And if you're looking for a really rare copy of the green insert, then again, you'll need to look on the back. But this one here is the last green insert that was made. And uh, just down here, you'll see it has a price of 400 yen. So that dates the insert at no earlier than 1968. And you can see it also has the later Victor record sleeve as well. Another way of identifying a later single is to look on the right side, or the, uh, yeah, the right side of the labels where it says SS series. If you can see it says side one and side two, then that tells you it's a post-1963 pressing. But there are other ways of identifying it more accurately, but certainly that tells you it's it was made after 1963. And a funny thing about this 
later single is you can see that it actually says side two on the jailhouse rock side and side one on the treat me nice side and that may be because the matrix number is lower on treat me nice so the matrix number on treat me nice is 6778 whereas it's 6779 on jailhouse rock so perhaps that's the source of confusion i'm not sure there were another couple of singles as well um, going into the 70s when they were repressed they had side one and side two that the wrong way around so that was actually the last time that Jailhouse Rock and Treat Me Nice, that classic um, pairing, was released. Uh, late 60s, early 70s. And then in 1971, they released a new single, a new, a new coupling. Jailhouse Rock on one side and Heartbreak Hotel on the other side. And this is a very common single. By this point, the single was being released in uh, stereo. And you can find at least three variants of this one, all with the same cover, but just slight variants. And you can see it's on RCA. This particular copy has been dinked, but it should, originally it would have had a tri-center in there. And they continued to release that single throughout the 70s. There were four different picture sleeve versions. And this is the last one from 1977, still with the same coupling, Jailhouse Rock and our Heartbreak Hotel and still in stereo and by then they were no longer making records with the tri-center so they look more like American singles all right let's go back to this program that I showed you at the beginning this jailhouse rock movie program here this was actually published in 1964, as it says down here, 1964, August 17. And it was actually published by the fan club of Japan. And the reason for that was because they showed Jailhouse Rock at a movie convention that they organized. And it also gives you some information about what happened to the film, as well as some fairly well-known photographs. So what happened apparently back in 1958 was MGM sold the rights to the movie to a company called Daye. And they did a screen, what are they called, uh, test screenings. And they even had posters made up for the movie, but for some reason it was never shown. And it didn't get shown until November 1962. And it was shown as part of a double feature with uh, another movie, which I'm just trying to find the name of because I've written it down. Uh, Taras Bulba. Have you heard of that? A double, it was part of a double feature with a movie called Taras Bulba, starring Tony Curtis, one of Elvis's idols, of course, and uh, Joel Brenner. So that was in November 1962. And then, as I say, the, the fan club... Uh, organized another screening of the film in 1964 and that's what this particular program is for and it gives you a lot of information about the movie and the um, cast and crew in fact it has the name of the director up here as uh, Richard Thorpe and then down here in the explanatory notes it has his name as uh, Richard Reap and that comes about because the Japanese characters in question, uh, they look very similar. So somebody has um, misread Thorpe as a reap. I'll, I'll put the characters on screen so you can see what I'm talking about. But in Japanese, they don't have the TH sound. So Thorpe in Japanese sounds like soap. So the word soap in English and Thorpe, the name Thorpe, sound exactly the same in Japanese. They're both pronounced soap. There's some more pictures. These look like the screenshots taken from the movie itself. And some more pictures here. It also gives you information about the records that were available at the time. The single SS1048, which we've just looked at, and uh, the EP and CP1005. Okay, let's go back to that first single and I'll try and explain how to identify early copies of Elvis's records 
not just for Jailhouse Rock, but this actually goes for any of his records from 1956 through the end of 1958. So in the case of Jailhouse Rock, you'll certainly need this uh, insert, this pink one, and it should be in a yellow sleeve like that. But what you really need to be looking out for is the information in the runout areas on both sides. You're not going to be able to see it, so I'll tell you what we're looking at, and I'll try and get some pictures up on screen as well. The first thing you need to look out for, in fact, the main thing to look out for is on the left side of both sides of the record, just beside the catalog number, you should be able to see a little star uh, stamped into the runout area. And below that, you'll probably see a number, either two or higher than two. If it has no number below the star, then that means it's number one. Okay, so the higher the number, the higher the pressing, or the, the later the stamper. That's my understanding of it. So in the case of my copy here, it has star and five on both sides. Star and five. So that would suggest it's the fifth stamper. Although, of course, they made more than one stamper at a time. I recently saw a 78 pressing. Uh, Japanese 78 and it actually had just the star with no number underneath it so that would have used the very first stampers and another thing you can look out for on the very early records 1956 through the end of 1958 is uh, on the opposite side of the dead wax you can see number one and then a dash and another number one okay so one dash one sometimes you might see two dash one but in almost all cases it will be one dash one and uh, that's how to identify those early pressings. If you have a copy of Jailhouse Rock, even with the pink insert, and it doesn't have the star on the left side of both sides of the uh, runout areas, then it'll be a later pressing from 59, or maybe a bit later. All right, so back to my trivia question. What was it? I asked um, the first Elvis movie in America released with a title that was not the same as a song in the movie. And the answer is, altogether... Kid Galahad. How many of you got that right? Everybody, right? Okay, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop them in the comment section below. But that's it for this video. Thanks very much. Take care. Cheers.